Is there a link between the things politicians say and the things people do? Well, the answer is yes, of course. That's what politics is all about. The best politicians persuade us that their ideas are best and people often change their behaviour. It's one of the ways societies alter. But what about when politicians hammer home very negative messages? Do those messages inspire some people to do terrible things? Last night we played you this collection of some Trumpisms. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. Because they have no sources, they just make them up when there are none. Fake news, folks, fake news. Fake news. And the fake news refuse to call it, right? They can make anything bad, because they are the fake, fake, disgusting news. That was just fake news by NBC. Uh, which gives a lot of fake news. CNN, fake. The failing New York Times. The failing New York Times. You know, not that I respect the New York Times. I call it the failing New York Times. BuzzFeed, which is a failing pile of garbage. Quiet, quiet, quiet. See, he lied about, he was going to get up and ask a very straight, simple question. So, you know, it's welcome to the world of the media. That was something we broadcast on the programme last night. A little later last night, after those devices were sent to several liberal politicians and to CNN, Donald Trump uh, made some remarks to a rally of his supporters. You might notice a change of tone. There is one way to settle our disagreements. It's called peacefully at the ballot box. That's what we want. That's what we want. As part of a larger national effort to bridge our divides and bring people together, the media also has a responsibility to set a civil tone and to stop the endless hostility and constant negative and oftentimes false attacks and stories. Have to do it. Any acts or threats of political violence are an attack on our democracy itself. Those engaged in the political arena must stop treating political opponents as being morally defective. No one should carelessly compare political opponents to historical villains. We want all sides to come together in peace and harmony. We can do it. We can do it. And by the way, do you see how nice I'm behaving today? This is like, have you ever seen this? We're all behaving very well. And hopefully we can keep it that way, right? Greg Swenson is from Republicans Overseas. Greg Swenson, did you did you notice a change in behavior? The president mentioned it himself. Yeah, yeah it was kind of, uh, it, it was uh, not well anticipated, but it's, you know, I think it was well received. And he came right out of the gate yesterday with a, you know, a very polite and presidential comment. I, I know Sarah Huckabee Sanders has been out quite a bit and making similar comments. So, I, look, you knew that CNN and, and the New York Times were going to be all over this. They really, they jump at any opportunity to, um, you know, to criticize the president or somehow connect. Well, let, anyone, let's leave, let's leave other know, news so. organizations to one side. Yeah, I, want, I want to ask you about the things okay. that the president yeah. himself has said. Now, he's, yeah. he, he, we both agree, and he said it himself, he changed his tone yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why would he change his tone after some, some suspicious devices were sent? Well, I, look, I think there's, there's a time where he, he, he is, he is his, he's less tone deaf than he used to be. And there's a time where you have to dial it down a notch, you know, it just wouldn't, I mean... But why it, would he dial it down? There can't possibly be a connection, can there, to Donald Trump's no, rhetoric and this thing, uh, these, these uh, devices? Of course, of course not. And so the, the, um, but, but he also knows that he's vulnerable to, um, to some heat from the press. And by uh, the way, he, he might just be, he might just be, you know, being a little bit more presidential, I think I should welcome that. Look, the conservatives are very critical of the president, and and there's a lot of cringeworthy, cringeworthy moments where you know he makes a comment, and I think, wow, I wish he wouldn't do that. I wish he could he could be a little more diplomatic, and I think he's made an effort at doing that, um, especially at rallies where he typically gets people fired up, and, he, hmm. and he's he's not exactly politically correct. So 
Um, no, I, I mean, I, I welcomed it. And, and you know, it's, times like this, you, it's, it's in everyone's interest to calm down, take a deep breath, not get too excited about um, this because it's, there's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose. You don't want, you don't want more inciv- incivility. If a president is constantly referring to almost all the media as enemies of the people, yeah. enemies of the people, would it yeah. be surprising if individuals, supporters of the president or otherwise, but people who, people who heard that from so senior a figure, the most important person in the country, and thought, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do my bit to take on these enemies. I mean, that's not uh, inconceivable, I, is it? Well, no, well, nothing's inconceivable. But I think to draw that conclusion is a little bit of a stretch. And, and, and I think part of it is that, look, we don't like when the president speaks like that. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's, but he's got some points. And I think there is some, some, um, you know, there, there are some of that, some of that, uh, you know, constant criticism he gets from the press. I I think he's right to complain about that. But look, that's been the case with conservatives and Republicans for a long time. I think the high road would be just accept it and just know that, you know, there's going to be some, some, you know, criticism from the press. Yeah, I think all presidents have complained. All presidents have complained of of, of both parties, but they don't refer to the media as enemies of the people. No, that's a little, a a little aggressive, but I think to, to suggest... To, to, yeah, but to, to look, there's a lot of this on both sides of the aisle right now, and that's why I think they should dial it down. But He's the president. When, when, of course, and there's also other major Democratic leaders on. And They're not just the president. Leaders on both sides, of course not. But but we just went through a, a rather volatile few months with the Brett Kavanaugh hearings, and you had people call, calling themselves the resistance and saying that whatever means necessary, and saying when well, you know he we go we, they go low, we kick them in the face. Look. None of this rhetoric is good. I don't encourage this from the president, typically, and I surely don't condone it. And there's times where I wish he would dial it down. But I think, look, if, if for whatever reason he decides to dial it down and be a little bit more respectful in his comments, well, then I welcome that. That's great. Uh, is I, he? But to, but to Sorry, suggest that there's, I, I just think it's a, it's it's too much speculation, without any evidence or any knowledge of what's going on or who this person is, who's obviously, you know, to say mentally unwell is an understatement. Um, Sorry, who are we know, talking about now? The president? Or? No, I'm saying, no, no, that's good though. Um, no, the, the the person, whoever it was, that did this, if, assuming it was one person. But look, who knows? I mean, it, it, there's there's absolutely no reason, or it's impossible to speculate on what the incentives were. Um, who knows? It could have been someone on the left that thought maybe this would be a good idea to you know, send these things out and, and that'll, that'll drum up the vote for the wow. Democrats. I mean, look, I know that's obscene. No, I'm not suggesting that, but that's, that's what all this is doing right now. We're 24 okay. hours into you, you this You literally thing, did just suggest hours. it. Yeah, um, no, I'm saying wouldn't that be silly if that were the case? So, right. so look, you know, it's, it's, no one knows anything about this situation right now well, about so so to connect that with the president they tried to do this with the gabby gifford shooting and then what's amazing is you never heard any of this kind of rhetoric from the right when J- james hodgkin you know hodgkinson who was a bernie sanders supporter shot a, a, a congressman on a baseball field you know it's just it's it doesn't do anybody any good to speculate when someone who's not well does something radical like this you know it's, this reminds me of the anth- anthrax insanity in 2001 who was the guy who said I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody? Who was the guy who did that? Yeah. I, I mean, could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose oh, any voters. Well, what, what is your question? A hypothetical? Or, no, who, who, who's I the man who said that? It was, it was candidate you know, Trump. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember his candidate or president, yeah. Yeah, but he became president. Don't you, think, that. don't you think that? Don't you think that was kind of a, you know, half in jest? I mean, if I stand, I don't know. Him, you know was he was like, he jesting or lying? Know, that's that's the, that's that's how he campaigns. I mean, mm. I don't know why anyone's surprised when you hear, um, you know, rather aggressive. Well, um, that, that we, then, know, well, then you come back, Greg Swenson, to where to where I started yeah. the conversation with you. Is anyone yeah. surprised? Yeah. And I'm just wondering whether there should be surprise that. Uh, a candidate and a president who spoke and speaks the way he does, who tells lies, as you put it, uh, has been tone deaf sometime and unpresidential, yeah. Uh, yeah. accuses the large sections of the media of any of the people. Should anyone be surprised yeah. at this turn of events? 
No, they should be surprised at these kind of events. What I'm suggesting is they shouldn't be surprised when the when the president speaks uh, without the gift of of the oratory <laughs> skills you'd normally associate with. This the isn't. Hold on. This that's isn't about oratory. Gotta, this, hold on. Hold on. That's, Forgive that's me, Greg Spencer. Can I suggest yeah. to you this isn't about oratory? This is about right. this is about uh, standards. The, the the president is not necessarily gifted in terms of his choice of words and his his relationship with the truth. oratory skills. Oh, absolutely. Look, this is one of the reasons he got elected. I mean, he's very outspoken. He says things that, that aren't necessarily polite. And that's, you know, look, I, I didn't vote for him in the primaries, but that's one of the reasons he, he drew a lot of attention and, and it, you know, the campaign works. So look, I, I, I wish that, that he would dial it down. I wish that, I wish that he would use a little bit more, um, you know, presidential tone, but I right. wouldn't, I wouldn't connect it, you know, no, nor would I suggest that the theatrics that you get from the other side of of the aisle would cause anybody to do something destructive like this. So I think okay. that's just a, it's really a stretch to do that. I'm grateful to you. Thank, thank you. Greg, right, Greg Swenson is time. from Republicans nice Abroad. Good, good to hear from you. And we will talk more in a second about whether there is a link between uh, that sort of language and these sort of actions which are making news.